we spent some time going through how to construct the pi molecular orbital diagrams for three atom conjugated systems. But what about larger systems like four or five or 22 atoms all in a row? Luckily, they follow a clear set of guidelines. I should point out that the rules we're going through here apply for linear systems, not cyclic or branched ones. Number one, the number of atoms in the conjugated system tells you the total number of molecular orbitals in the pi system. Three atoms means three total pi molecular orbitals. 25 atoms in the conjugated system, 25 pi molecular orbitals. N atoms, N molecular orbitals. Number two, each orbital has a different number of nodes. The lowest energy orbital has zero nodes, and the highest energy orbital has n minus 1 nodes. The nodes are always distributed symmetrically. So for instance, the orbital with one node always has it smack dab in the middle. And the orbital with n minus 1 nodes has a node between each pair of adjacent atoms. Number three, all molecular orbitals with less than n minus 1 over 2 nodes are bonding orbitals. So for example, for a three atom system, any orbital with less than one node is bonding. Molecular orbitals with exactly n minus 1 over 2 nodes are non-bonding. And those with greater than n minus 1 over 2 nodes are anti-bonding. Number four, bonding orbitals tend to be larger on the more electronegative atoms or those with a negative charge. While antibonding orbitals are largest on electropositive atoms or those with positive charges. Non-bonding orbitals are a bit harder to predict orbital sizes, but we'll talk about specific instances when it becomes relevant. Remember that size of an orbital Reflect, reflects the likelihood of an electron in that orbital being at a particular location. Number five, we fill these molecular orbitals from the bottom up, and we only fill them with electrons that are part of the conjugated system, that is, those that are in conjugated pi bonds in some resonance structure. Number six, the energy gaps between molecular orbitals shrink the more atoms are present. That is, the orbitals get more closely spaced. This has implications for spectroscopy. The energy gap between the HOMO and the LUMO corresponds to the energy of photons that can be absorbed by that molecule. Short conjugated systems typically absorb high energy ultraviolet light while longer conjugated systems have smaller homolumo gaps and therefore absorb lower energy photons, usually in the visible region of the spectrum. Hence, highly conjugated molecules tend to be colorful. Let's illustrate all of these rules with an example and construct the MO diagram of the pentadienyl cation, sketch the orbitals that are in that molecular orbital diagram, and use it to predict how that cation might react. We know that there are five carbon atoms, so we have five pi molecular orbitals with zero, one, two, three, and four nodes. The two lowest energy orbitals are bonding, the two highest energy orbitals are antibonding, and the one in the middle is non-bonding. There are four total electrons in this system, just the two from each pi bond in the Lewis structure. Since this is a cation, we know it will act as an electrophile. So we're most interested in its acceptor orbital, its LUMO. Since the LUMO has nodes at these two atoms, but has lobes at all three of these atoms, it can accept electrons at any of these three sites. This is reflected in the resonance structures. 
we can draw resonance structures with positive charge at all three of those carbon atoms, but no resonance structures where the positive charge is on the other two atoms.